By the end of this video, we will have a fruit counter in our top right corner of the UI that keeps track of how many fruit objects we pick up. And we will accomplish this by making use of horizontal layout groups. Let's get started. Just a heads up, I've gone ahead and re-recorded this first part of the video where we are going to make this fruit panel that's appearing here. Functionally, it will be identical to what I created in the past, uh, but visually it will look a little bit different than what you're going to see in the later part of this video and in the next video. Previously, I had recorded making this panel using a horizontal layout group, but in hindsight, it was overkill. It was a little bit too complicated for this tutorial. We can achieve the same effect using custom anchor points, which I'm going to show you how to do. So on the canvas, I'm going to go to right click, go to create a new UI image, and I'm going to rename this to be fruit panel. It's going to make this ugly white square in the center of our screen. We're going, but what we want is the panel to appear in the upper right corner of the screen. Of course, I could go to the scene view. I could drag it and move it manually up here, and then we could be done with it. Now, if I put it here, well, it might look good, but if I change it to 1610 aspect ratio, it gets messed up. We don't want to do it this way. The proper way to do this is by setting our anchor point. I'm going to click this box over here, hold Alt, and then click this upper right box, and that's going to move it exactly to the top right corner of the screen. Now, if I was to change it from 16.9 to 1610, it's going to move accordingly. I also like using nice even numbers at zero. So what I'm going to do is set a pivot point, and I'll zoom in so we can see what this is going to do. I'm going to set the pivot point of the X to 1, and the pivot point of the Y to 1, making our pivot in the very top right corner of this box, and that sets our position X and position Y to 0. Now typically when adding UI objects, we also don't want things touching the edges of the screen, so I'm going to set a position X of minus 25 and a position Y of minus 25, to give our panel some padding. Then I also think a white box is quite ugly. I'm also gonna uncheck Raycast Target because we don't need it to look for mouse clicks. So on Source Image, I'm gonna click this little circle button. And then over here, I'm going to type the number nine and, the, and I'm going to type a dash after it. And what I wanna look is for something called a nine sliced object, which is a uh, image that comes with a 2D project and has nice rounded corners. We don't see it, so I'm going to click this eye icon, and we're going to see nine sliced. There's three of them. They, I think the second two have some sort of border. I don't want the border, so I'm just going to click this first one. And then we can see we have a nice rounded uh, panel, and we can adjust the rounding by changing the pixels per unit multiplier. One looks fine, so I'm just going to leave that at one. I'm also going to change the color to maybe a uh, dark gray and lower its opacity to say 50%. Then underneath the fruit panel, I'm going to right click again, go to UI, add another image, and I'll call this icon. I will then change it to an apple, which we'll use as the default icon. You can set it to whatever fruit you want. I will uncheck ray cast target, because again, we don't need it to look for clicks. And then I'll right click on the fruit panel again, go to UI, and create a text mesh pro object and if this is your first time clicking this you should get a little pop-up asking you to import text mesh pro components so go ahead and click the import button and then i'll rename this text counter and then i'll just type times one which is more accurate as to what this will actually look like if i click on the scene view you can see that the uh, they're here but if i adjust the size of the fruit panel well they don't move how I want them to, and I would also want them to be in the relative positions. So to get an idea of how I might like them to look, I could start by just clicking on them and manually moving them into position. Of course, this is not how we want to do it. We want to let Unity automatically position UI elements for us as much as possible. The way we can do this is by setting our anchor points and also possibly our pivot points. Let's start with this apple. Because it's on the left side, I'll set the pivot to be at zero. And then over here, I could click this button up here again and hold Alt and automatically position it to the left, which gives us a clean zero, zero, and then do the opposite for the text, change its X pivot to one, click on this and anchor it to the right. And of course the text itself is aligned to the left. So I wanna change this to center alignment 
and we're getting some better results, but not quite what we're looking for. As far as this knows, right now, the anchor for the text, it's anchored both with its minimum and maximum value to the right side over here. Uh, that's not exactly what I want. I want the text to know that it's allowed to go anywhere between about 50% of the width of this total fruit panel object all the way to the right of it. So what I can do is click on the text counter, go to its min uh, y pivot and change that to 0.5. And we can see that's changed, dragged this little icon over here to halfway, the halfway point. I also want it to be able to take up the full height of the panel. So I can change its min y anchor to zero, its max y anchor to one. And then what I need to do is set these numbers over here to zero, 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 and zero. And it will be allowed to take up exactly half the height and half the width of this panel. If I do the same to the apple, I can go over here and say, I want you to take up 50% of the total space. So I'm going to leave its min x anchor at zero, change its max to 0.5, because we're dealing in percents with these anchors, then change its min y to zero, and its max y to one. And again, we'll just make sure these numbers all say zero. And now they are beautifully positioned right in the center. If I was to go to the game view, I can see that's exactly the case. And if I was to adjust the fruit panel's width, I can see it's going to move with it. The apple also does this ugly thing where it stretches. So if I click on its icon, I can hit preserve aspect and that makes it preserve its width and its height accordingly. Of course, it's not staying centered. Why is that happening? Well, right now I set a pivot of zero for the apple. I want the pivot for the app. I want the apple to actually appear exactly in the center of this box. So I'm going to leave the pivot to 0.5 to make it appear in the center and then just change all these numbers back to zeros again. Sometimes when it gets into stretch mode, it likes to go into weird numbers. And on the text counter, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm actually gonna leave the X pivot at 0.5 and force these numbers to go to zeros all the way around. I may have to do it a couple of times. Being really weird with those numbers. There we go. Now they are at forced to be at zeros. And if I was to adjust the fruit panel again accordingly, I can see that it's now staying centered. Of course, because of the curved edges, technically the center is not going to be the far right and the far left. I just graphically, the center is going to be more like where the curve ends. Uh, so we can see it a little better. It's kind of hard to see the fruit panel right now because of the lower transparency. I'm just going to temporarily change its color. And then I'm going to go on the apple icon and I'm going to change its min anchor to about 0.1, which is kind of where the curve ends over here. And then go on the text counter and change its max from one to 0.9. And then again, I have to make sure these numbers up at the top are also set to zero and zero. And now we're saying that the center of this 50% uh, of the way through is relative to this point on the left and this point on the right which just makes it look a little better if we were to go into this uh, game view and start adjusting it. Uh, we probably don't want them to, uh, the panel to be too big and too small. So I'm gonna leave this at maybe like say 250 uh, width, 75 height. Maybe that's even too much, maybe like 200 width. And I also think the apple looks a little bit small. So what I might do is change, just go here and lock its scale button and change and change it to 1.5. It does look like it's a little high, but it's just the, it's just kind of an optical illusion because of where the uh, leaf of the apple appears. Uh, overall, I do think that's okay. Uh, I would, I'm not gonna, it's not a good idea to change the scale of your font. However, uh, what you should just do is adjust the font size uh, to something that's going to match more like what you want it to look like. And I'll go back here and I'll just change the uh, image again to a darker gray, which I think looks a little better. And there we go. Now we have a nice scalable UI panel. And if we change our screen size, it should also adjust accordingly. As for increasing the counter, well, this part's pretty easy. We already have a public static action on fruit collected that we're invoking whenever we collect a fruit object. And we already have a HUD script. So up here at the top of the HUD script, I'm going to say using TMP Pro to add the text mess net Text Mesh Pro namespace, excuse me. I'm gonna delete those unused namespaces, 
I'm going to add a new serialized field, private text mesh pro GUI object, and I'm just going to call this counter text. Then I'm going to go here to on enable and on disable and get a reference to say fruit dot on fruit collected plus equals collect fruit. Press control period to generate that method. And then I'll unsubscribe from that down here. Oops. There we go. When generating this method, we do have to take in a value health restored because that's essentially how we set up this action. But just because we're taking it in doesn't mean we have to use it. Let's go up top and make a variable to count how many fruit we've collected. We'll just call it private int fruit collected amount. And here we can say counter text dot text equals, and I'll use a little dollar sign icon here and say x fruit collected amount. And then before we call this line, we'll also say fruit collected amount plus plus to increment it by one. We'll save and go back to Unity. Back in Unity, we'll add the counter to our counter text and then hit play to test. There we go. And we've collected one, two, and every time we collect a fruit, it's going to increment by one. So there we go. We've created a nice working item collected counter. In our next video, we'll be setting our game up to have multiple scenes. So I land on this trophy here, and there we go. I'm now in a completely brand new level. All right, we'll see you there. Mm -hmm.